Welcome back to Security Onion Essentials. If you recall, we talked about three common workflows that you will use in Security Onion. In this session, we're going to cover the very first workflow, alert triage and case creation. We're going to look at our alerts in the Security Onion console under the alerts queue. We're going to triage them. We're going to acknowledge and dismiss a couple and then also dig into one and escalate it into a case in the hive. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm starting out logged into the Security Onion console, and I'm gonna come over to the alerts interface. And let's stop here just for a second. So this workflow, alert triage and case creation, is really simply the idea that on a regular basis, you're gonna come over here to the alerts queue. You're gonna look at all of the alerts that you have here, and you're just gonna start working down the list. You're gonna triage them, You're gonna, and by triage, I mean, you're gonna dig into them and figure out if it's something that needs to be escalated or if it can be acknowledged and dismissed. But before we actually do that, let me talk through the interface if you look here at the very top, we have a couple toggles, Acknowledge and Escalated. Uh, once you have Acknowledge or Escalated an alert, they're gonna be removed from your view here. And so you can use a toggle to view any that you've acknowledged or escalated. You'll see that we actually already have some that we've acknowledged. And on the far right hand side here, we have our total number of alerts found for the time period which we can easily switch to be shorter or longer. And then on the left-hand side here, we have our queries. These queries define what the view down here looks like. Okay, so right now we are grouping our alerts by rule.name and by module over here, event.module. Remember that event.module is um, oh, specifically in this case, uh, it would be like Siracata or Wazoo or Playbook, whatever the alerting engine is, whatever engine generated the alert. So we could certainly change this view and different views are gonna be useful for uh, different ways of looking at your data. So if we wanna say, I wanna look by uh, group by source IP and rule name, that will go ahead and change our view. And we'll see that these bubbles right here uh, actually um, change with the query. So we could actually change this by just uh, clicking this X and that removed that, uh, that event uh, severity label over here, that column over here on the far right hand side. But we're gonna start out with the default of grouping by the alert name and the module. So when presented with a view like this, um, this is actually, quite honestly, not that many alerts. There's going to be more likely um, hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of alerts that are generated by the different alerting engines in Security Onion. So having a good aggregated view of your alerts, whether it's aggregated on uh, the name or something else, is going to be really helpful for you. And there are many different ways that you can start uh, triaging and working through this list. One of the easier ways would just be coming over to the event.severity and we're going to focus specifically on any high severity alerts. So to do that, let me make this a little easier to see here. To do that, I'm going to left click on that high and I have a pop-up of a few different options. I'm going to left click on this magnifying glass with the plus sign. That's going to filter specifically for the high severity uh, alerts. And you can see that that changed our view to show us only the alerts with the event.severity of high. So at this point, um, I, as I look through this, I see one in particular that I don't really care about. Uh, here's a policy alert that is saying that I have an endpoint that has Dropbox and it's broadcasting. Um, I could certainly drill down into this and look at what IPs are involved, but I don't, I don't really care about this. So I'm gonna come over to the left-hand side. I'm gonna click on this bell icon. I'm gonna click on dismiss, and it says acknowledging alert and removed from view. Again, we could come up here to acknowledged, and we'll see that alert again there uh, if we ever need to go back to anything that we've acknowledged. Now, uh, if, if that type of alert is something that 
you're going to get on a regular basis and you don't care about, you're going to want to actually tune your grid so that you don't have to keep clicking that bell icon every, every few hours to make those alerts go away. Um, and you can do that by, let's come over here to our documentation. And if we scroll down, we have a whole section on tuning. And I would suggest that if you have uh, rules that you really just don't care about, like Skype in your environment or Dropbox, check through our documentation and make sure you tune those out so that you don't have to waste valuable time and effort on trying to just click that bell icon every few hours as you get those alerts that come in. So now that we've dismissed a, an alert that we don't mind um, so much about right now, let's look at the rest of these alerts and see if there's anything that looks interesting. And I can see one that I have right here. To be clear, I did replay some network traffic to this box earlier, which is why I've got some of these alerts and data in here. Make it easier for our demo to be able to click through and show you uh, what I'm doing. So this one, ET Malware, uh, Ferret, Pony, Downloader, Check-In 2, is interesting to me because of this check-in uh, phrase. The check-in usually happens more towards the end of a life cycle of an attack where you actually already have the, uh, the malware that has downloaded, compromised the endpoint, and now that malware is reaching out to the command and control infrastructure and checking in for next instructions or whatever it's you know devised to do. And so we want to go ahead and check into this. We are going to left click and we're going to click on that double chevron uh, icon and that's going to allow us to drill down into this event. So you can see that this changed our view a bit. A bit. We went to a custom view um, and we specifically are filtering for the rule.name of uh, ET malware and the rest of that name. We can see the source IP and destination IPs involved. This is one of our internal hosts on the network. Looks like it's reached out to this external IP address on port 80. All right, now because it's port 80, um, well, let's actually dig into the alert. If I click on this icon, it will open up uh, the alert and I can look at all the alert fields and dig into the data from here. Specifically, I want to look at the rule. This is the rule that generated the alert. Okay. And it's specifically saying alert when it's on uh, HTTP from home net to external net. And specifically, let's see, the HTTP method is uh, a post. And with this, it's doing some pattern matching uh, for the payload, and it's also looking for specific user agent. All right, so pretty pretty specific rule here. So we can actually pull a packet capture of this and see what we find out. If we click on show PCAP for this event, that's going to bring us to our packet capture interface, which will allow us to actually dig into this event. And it opened it into the view that I already have, but I'm going to back out this uh, this view just a little bit so that you can see. Um, initially, you'll see maybe a view like this where we actually have an overview of the connection. So we have the three-way handshake, SYN, SYNAC, ACK, and then the rest of the connection. And now if I want to actually see a transcript on the payload and what happened, I can go ahead and uh, toggle some of these options here. I could toggle hex if I want to see the hex values, um, but I want to just see the ASCII uh, representation. So the blue is from our endpoint. It is posting to this host, theaterpunti.ru slash d2 about.php. And we have our user agent that I was looking for. And the content encoding is binary, so and it definitely looks like binary data, right? So we have an endpoint that is posting binary data to this very interesting sounding website. And the response in red here is uh, HTTP 200 OK. And we have some binary data that came back. So because it's binary data, there's not really a lot that we can draw from it. Uh, we could download the packet capture and um, right here and see if there's anything that we could glean from it. But I think at this point, it would be useful to come back to our alerts and uh, see if there are any other alerts from our endpoint. Because as I mentioned, 
this check-in uh, is usually happens, uh, you know, post compromise after the malware has already been uh, has already uh, compromised the endpoint, and so we want to try to find out what happened earlier uh, to this endpoint. So I'm going to left click on this source IP. I'm going to uh, hover over this empty magnifying glass, and that's going to look for any excuse me any alerts that have the source or destination IP of our internal host. And we can see here that we have quite a few alerts. Scroll all the way down, there's our check-in right there. And if we look at the timestamps, we'll see that this is in order. So I'm gonna flip the timestamps around, make it a little bit easier. So this is um, the end of the connection, right? So at the very bottom here would have been the beginning, what we assume would be the beginning. Now this is only alerts, right? So if there was other things that happened on this host related to this, uh, compromise that didn't generate an alert. We won't necessarily see that here because this is just our alerts related to this host. But what I do see is very early on that what looks like a likely evil executable was downloaded uh, from MS XML HTTP. Um, and then we have another Windows file download over HTTP. Okay, so let's dig into this event again. And uh, again, we could go show the packet capture for this see if there's anything interesting. So we see our endpoint uh, reached out to this host, ebaaacq.com, get uh, 877.8234.dll, so DLL file. And then the server responded with, okay, here you go. And uh, it responded with that executable file, right? So we have the header MZ, this program cannot be run in DOS mode, and then that PE. So again, we could download this as a PCAP and open up that PCAP uh, in Network Miner and generate a hash for it and uh, go to Virus Total from there. Um, but again, keep in mind that Zeek is running and uh, Zeek is extracting out files like this if it can. And uh, let's go see if we can find this data in Zeek and, uh, and pivot from there to Virus Total. So let's go back to our alerts. And if I look at our data, we see that, um, again, we have our, our internal IP address and then the external IP address, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and pivot and see if there are any other events, specifically Zeek file events for this IP address. Now, if I look at our pop-up, um, we'll see that there is this little target uh, icon, right? And this is, this is telling us that if we click on this, it's gonna bring us over to our hunt interface. All right, and it's gonna look for any data related to this IP address in our hunt interface. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, the hunt interface, I'm not gonna go in depth into what this interface, uh, what everything means. We'll talk about that in our second workflow, ad hoc hunting. Just to be clear though, is that we have our alerts over here and then the hunt interface. The hunt interface allows us to uh, more easily slice and dice our data um, from different perspectives. And I find that um, very, very often I will go from an alert over in the alerts interface over to hunt and trying to cast a wider net because I'm only seeing alerts in alert in the alert interface. In hunt, I'm seeing all the different data, all the different data types we have, right? Because if I scroll down, I'm, here's my IP address, and then we're grouping by event.module and event.data set. We have our data right here. We do see we have Zeek events and our two Siricata alerts. All right, so it's going to be very common that you're going to you're going to pivot from the alerts interface over to Hunt as you try to triage an alert and try to figure out if there's something going on. So we do have a number of Zeek events, HTTP, a file, which is what we want, a DNS, and a connection log. So let's uh, let's filter for that file uh, Zeek log. So I'm going to left click. I'm gonna click on that plus sign with the magnifying glass. And that's gonna filter only for that log. And if I scroll down, we'll see that at the very bottom here, I have that Zeek file log. And I'll open that up. Again, it, it looks somewhat similar to the alerts interface. We have that pop-ups and uh, drill down into an event just like our alerts interface. So if I scroll up, we'll see that uh, Zeek 
has analyzed, excuse me, has analyzed this file and it's run uh, MD5 and the SHA-1 hash on it. So let's find those hashes, which is right here. And I'm gonna left click and you'll see that we have an option for virus total. So I'm gonna click on virus total and that's gonna bring up the virus total website with the hash preloaded and we'll see that whatever file this is that was downloaded, definitely getting some major hits from virus total 50 out of 71. All right, so definitely looking like whatever file was downloaded um, and uh, presumably was run because we got that check-in uh, was definitely not legit. So at this point, I'd say we have plenty of information to escalate this case, excuse me, escalate this alert and create a case. The idea here is that I need, a, I need to start making notes of everything I found. I may need to escalate this to a, another analyst or maybe to the, another shift, right? And so we want to create a case in the hive so I can put all this information someplace so that it can continue to be investigated more long term. So let's come back to our alerts interface. And uh, we're going to escalate um, a couple different alerts. First, I'm going to click on this blue escalate icon. And that's going to create a case in the hive. And I'm going to scroll up and I'm also going to escalate that check in. All right, so that has been escalated. So let's come over to the hive. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, open up the hive. And if you're not familiar with the Hive, there are a number of different things we can do with it. It does have its own alerts queue, uh, but we are only using, in Security Onion, we're only using the alerts interface inside the Security Onion console. And you escalate one of those alerts to a case in the Hive. And that would be the other main piece of functionality in the Hive is to create a case. You can see we have two cases created here, number 13 and 14. So let's open up one of these. We have some information, a summary of the case, and then tasks and observables, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Now we escalated two different alerts, but they're actually part of the same case. And so we're gonna merge those together, those two cases that we created together. And if you recall the numbers, I believe the case numbers were 13 and 14. So I'm gonna do it by case number click on merge, and that's gonna merge both of those cases into one, okay? And again, this may not look uh, very pretty right now, but we can edit the description, um, put in some notes about what we're finding. Then we can also come over to observables. Observables is the hunt way of saying indicators or indicators of compromise, All right? Think of the hash, the executable that was downloaded, um, the, uh, the domain name, um, for the two websites that we downloaded, we did the check-in as well as where we got the uh, the executable from. All those are observables, right? And so we can add one right now. Let's add, uh, let's do the hash that we just saw. So I'm going to come over to virus total, grab the hash that we just searched for. I'm going to paste that in. And it is an indicator of compromise and it has been cited. Um, for tags, you can put anything in here. Obviously, it's going to be relevant to your organization and the case. I'm going to just put in a tag that this was an executable. The description, I'm going to actually copy and paste the um, virus total link. And we believe, uh, you know, we think this was the first stage download, though we don't know that for sure. So I'm going to write, we think this is the first first stage download for this malware and then create the observable. Uh, we can add all the other observables that I just mentioned. And the reason why we want to put that in there, we want to be able to uh, pivot from these to uh, running further analysis on it. We can also search through other cases that we currently have open to see if observables match between the two. Maybe the cases are related. Right, so there's a lot of a lot of avenues there to pursue once we have our observables entered. We also have tasks to enter. So this would be next steps, right? Um, one of them would be, which I've already preloaded here, is investigate further. If we look back at the alerts, 
there are a lot of other alerts that we haven't investigated related to this internal IP. We've got these, um, specifically I'm thinking this HTTP post to mega user storage. What's going on with that? That's right before the check-in. Uh, suspicious user agent. We have these IP lookups, right? So we have a number of alerts that we still need to investigate. So investigate further, uh, HTTP post to mega. Um, and there may be some other tasks, like let's let's turn around and check to see if we've uh, found any other uh, connections out to this command and control infrastructure in our, uh, in our organization, right? So lots of other ways that we could go about this. Now for the sake of, of this session, let's say that we've went ahead and finished these tasks. Um, we were able to work out the timeline that, uh, that this box has been compromised. There was an initial download from an uh, invoice and then we had a secondary malware download um, and then we had some data posted um, to the mega user storage and finally we had our check-in. And so we, we've got a pretty good timeline here. We've entered that all into our case. We've pulled the box for further forensic and cleanup and we're also starting to look at the rest of the organization and see if there's any other fallout from this particular malware, okay? So at this point, we're gonna close out this case. We can click on close. And it says that we have open or unassigned tasks, which is fine. I'm gonna close those tasks and the case. Uh, it's gonna ask us some questions about the case. Um, what is the status? This was a true positive. Yes, there was an impact. Um, and the summary is that um, pulled endpoint for further uh, analysis and cleanup. Um, and we'll leave it at that. We're gonna close that case. All right, so that is a really, really quick run through of workflow number one, alert triage and case creation. Remember that we started out with our list of alerts. Let me come back to our overview here. We started out with our list of alerts. We kind of talked through some different ways of being able to work through that list. You can filter by event.module or severity, maybe count, maybe just look at names. Again, there's a number of different ways to start off, right? But you're gonna be working the queue. You're definitely going to um, acknowledge and dismiss some alerts. Others, as you're working through, you're pivoting around through to PCAP, uh, over to the hunt uh, interface for further analysis. You realize it needs to be escalated. You click on your escalate button. That removes it from your view and it creates a case in the hive for further investigation. That is it for this session. Uh, next session, we will look at workflow number two, ad hoc hunting, where we'll dive more in depth into the hunt interface. See you next time.